I'm shooting this video Sunday morning, June 25th, 2017. Almost already halfway through with the year, or basically halfway through with the year already. Wow, how time flies when you're having fun. My work has always been dedicated to encouraging people to look inside themselves for answers. To the answers of what is moral because I believe that moral law is written inside of us, just as the scripture says, that the laws of God are written on the fleshy tables of our heart. And I believe that. And I also believe that we of the white race are the Adamic race, the race of Adam and Eve, and only the whites are. And I believe that the ancient Israelites were not the ancestors of today's Jews. They were the ancestors of the majority of the white race today. All whites are Adamites today, but most white Adamites are to today are Israelites descended from the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what I believe. I am an identity Christian, a dual seat line Christian, a Christian identist. And if you want to know more about that, you can go to christagenia.org or any good Christian identity website to explain the basics to you of that. But I certainly don't believe the Bible is a Jewish book whatsoever. Now, I'm going to give a quote from Delphi, the oracle, from ancient Greece, and the ancient Greeks were descended from the Danans and the Dorians, and these people were descended from Israelites that had already migrated through the, uh, from Egypt and from the Mediterranean area region there, Mediterranean Sea area, and later established Greece and later Rome. But anyway, these ancient Israelites, which were Adamites, had a spiritual urging and their own God concept or concept of God. The holy swastika and the cross wheel and all cross symbols, those of you that are racially awake, are symbols of the white race, are actually symbols that come from the white race, but come from within their Adamic spirit and are symbols of God consciousness of the Eternal One, as he is called in the scripture. He is the I Am. He's just the I Am. He just exists. Yahweh is Paleo-Hebrew for self-existent one or eternal one. The ancient Druids, the Celts and the Germanic Druids, called the this God, the Ever-Living One, the All-Knowing One, the invisible one, their great invisible one, the invisible father. And the reason they did that, these Germanic and Celtic tribes did that, and Saxon tribes, is because they knew that God was something or someone, a being that couldn't, an image couldn't be made to. The Druids didn't make idols of God, and neither did the ancient Israelites. Well, they didn't until they started perverting and taking up pagan beliefs and specifically Canaanite beliefs. But they knew that God was something that couldn't be seen. He can only be felt. He is imagination. He is feeling. And they knew that they were an offspring of him. And we of the Adamic race are indeed an offspring of this great God. And this God consciousness goes throughout all of the white race. And the symbols of the God, of God consciousness, the holy crosses, the cross wheels, and the swastikas, and the gamadons, the flyfoots, and all of that. People think, oh, it's just symbols of the sun. Well, even the sun was just a symbol of something unseen, a bright light, something that transcends or is in the sky or over us, that gives us a spiritual light so we can see, that gives us warmth that gives us energy to grow like plants grow. And a being that, like the sun, could always be trusted to rise again every morning. Perpetual, always, cycling. So the sun is only a representation of God. And many Christians today are always running around call, accusing people of all their paganism, all that's just sun worship from ancient Babylon and Egypt, and it's it's the Illuminati and all this kind of crap. And they forget that ancient the ancient prophet Malachi in their Bible, chapter four, verse two, called God, Yahweh, Jehovah, the sun, the winged sun. And when Malachi wrote that, 
He was familiar with the, his fellow Adamic white people's expression of God, artistic expression of God as a winged sun disk in Egypt, in Assyria, and Babylon, which were white empires. And he was aware of that. He was a Hebrew Israelite, a fellow white man. Because the Israelites weren't Jews. The ancestors of today's Jews were the Canaanites, the Edomites. Not. And the Kenites, not the biblical Israelites. And this God consciousness is something that can't be pointed at and directed at. It can only be felt and known. You can't make an image to God because he is no image. He is feeling. He is thought. He is imagination. He is creativity. Why, he is the creator. And our race and all the branches of the white Adamic race have always carried with them this instinctual knowledge and urging for higher thought, higher feeling, for creativity, for exploring, for discovering, for knowing, for just existing, for being. And God calls himself in the Bible that I am. I am the being. And the Septuagint in the Greek version of the Old Testament, translated in English, he calls himself I am the being in Exodus. He just exists. He has self-awareness. He created a physical dirt man, Adam, out of the dirt. That's the physical part of it. The mother of man, the feminine of man is the earth. But the masculine of man is the spirit of Yahweh God that he put inside the, called the breath of life. God is a spirit. He doesn't breathe. He didn't literally kneel down to give CPR to that dirt man, that man he made out of dirt, Adam, in the book of Genesis, the first chapter. No. Where's the second chapter? No. He put a part of himself in it to live and experience through Adam kind, through white kind, through the white race. And so this instinctual urging through all whites, many of us we repress it or we express it in very weird ways. Others of us, we get more, we get clear. It's all about how clear your physical dirt brain is, your outer mind, or as the Bible calls it, your carnal mind, your physical brain part of you. The masculine of you is the spirit of God. The feminine of you is your physical and your physical brain. That is of your mother, Mother Earth. But your heavenly father it takes a father and a mother to raise a child, doesn't it? But the Father should be ruling over your feminine, your mother mind, your outer brain mind. It should be supreme. And when we live more from the Spirit, we start getting more spiritual understanding. Glimpses of things. This is an impulse, an instinct, which comes from your outer mind, and that's what animals live by. This is about living from intuition, inspiration, insight that comes from your Father mind, your Spirit mind. God within you. The ancient Egyptians, the ancient Babylonians, the ancient Assyrians, and all the ancient whites, the ancient whites of India, they all had this God consciousness that would peek out through them and is expressed in the different myths and tales. And there's a reason why there's a unification or commonality between all of this. All the different tales of the white Adamic people, throughout the white Adamic Akumene, known ancient world. There's a reason why. There's a self-same consciousness. It just gets expressed in different ways because of how our carnal minds translate the messages from our spirit minds. How mother interprets what dad is saying. Delphi, the oracle, she said, Heed these words. You wish to probe the depths of nature if you do not find within yourself that which you seek, neither will you find it outside. In you is hidden the treasure of treasures. Know thyself, and you will know the universe and the gods. We have to look inside for wisdom and understanding and knowledge. We find God when we look inside. We find the Heavenly Father, not out in the sky somewhere, not in a church building, not in a book like the Bible or any other writing, 
Not in someone else's teachings. Not in mine. Not on YouTube videos, not people's podcasts, or anything else. You find God when you look inside. You find the universe and the God, or gods, that we are. We are what the Bible calls the Elohim. We are the offspring of our Father. We are God. There are not many gods. There is only one God. And His name is one. He is the I Am. But this I Am expresses Himself in many ways. Many Christians stumble over how could Jesus be God at that same time. That's the mystery of you. You are Jesus. For God is one, but he's living out an experience through many different peoples. Yes, he's the thief. Yes, he's the meth dealer that lives down the road from me. Yes, he's, he's the, the corrupt politician or the corrupt TV preacher. Yes, he's the hardworking carpenter. Yes, he's the, the, the hardworking school teacher or mechanic or, or, or nurse or doctor. Yes, that's he. That is he. He is the one. He is you. You're not going to find God anywhere else but looking inside. I've been reading and studying the Bible since 13. I'm fixing to be 49 years old. And I didn't find God and really begin to understand God until I began to look in. When after all these years, my life has just seemed like it just hit rock bottom and then it would raise up a little bit rock bottom again. And I go, God, I try to serve you. I try to keep your laws and be moral and do the right thing and all this type of stuff. And I always professed you to people and told you, told people about you. And I preached the gospel to people. And I tried to do right. Even when I did fall, I would still try to get back up and do right. And now look at you, God. What have you done to me? Show yourself to me. Damn it. And he did. Shortly thereafter, I began to realize that God is not outside of myself. God is within me. But when you calm the carnal mind, as the Bible says, we're to crucify our, our flesh daily. That doesn't mean your physical flesh. It's all about the flesh brain. The outer brain, the mother brain. Mother must be in subjection to father. The wives are to submit to their husbands. And this is the great mystery. The feminine must submit to the masculine. Today in our society, you see all this craziness and it's femininity, multiculturalism, diversity, feminism, homosexuality, all these spirits of femininity. The feminine is trying to overshadow the masculine. And this is because the masculine will not arise or be allowed to arise. We must submit to the masculine. When the feminine is submitted to the masculine, when the wife is submitted to the husband, There is a harmony and a beauty in the household, in the marriage, in the family, in the community, in the neighborhood, in the society, in the nation. The masculine stands for law and standard. The feminine stands for love and grace. But you cannot have love and grace without law, for then it becomes meaningful. Willy nilly love. We just love everybody. Love, 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 love. Means nothing. It has no standard. It becomes meaningless without law and standard. I teach law of attraction. I do. But law of attraction is as I have titled in one of my videos. I titled it law of faith. It's simply the law of faith. It's just a higher law of physics. It's a law of physics like the law of gravity. It's a law of nature like kind after kind. It's a beautiful law, like the law of male and female, or masculine and, and feminine. It's beautiful. It is a physical law, and quantum physics physicists are finding this out. The law of faith is referred to in Romans 3.27. The law of attraction is referred to in many places, but this is one of them. Romans 3.27. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded? By what law? Of works? Nay, but of the law of faith. Works don't get you there. For years, I was trying to live righteously and trying to know the right theology and right doctrines and follow the right rules and laws and keep the right Sabbath day and don't eat pork and don't lie and don't lust after someone else's wife and all these type of things that I strove to do. And yet the Pharisees of Christ's day, they did it good. They were really good at it. Boy, they kept every 
jot and tittle every they dotted every i and crossed every t they knew every comma and every period they knew the law inside and out and they followed it physically and yet jesus said they were like dead men's bones and not all those pharisees were edomites a lot of those pharisees were like nicodemus they were white israelites but they were wrapped up in what's written on paper or parchment or skins or in stone of the scrolls that they had and that's what they focused on and that's what they obsessed over and that's where you get your babylonian talmud that started out orally and then later was written they become obsessed with legalisms instead of understanding the spirit of the law they had no faith without the high law of faith every other law is useless the Bible teaches in the New Testament that love is the fulfilling of the law. That keeping the law is by loving. You can't even have love if you don't have faith. Faith is belief. Faith is not hope. Hope is a pile of shit with some icing on it. I even wrote a poem a while back. It's on my website uh, about hope. How hope is just stupid. It's useless. Faith or belief, I use the two terms interchangeably, is simply having a goal, knowing what you want, you want to see someone overcome uh, an illness or a financial problem, or you want it for yourself, whatever it is. You have a focus. You know what you would rather have. You can't, nature abhors a, vo a, vo a vacuum. That's another law of physics. You can't create a void. That's what this battle is going on today, called a battle, between the feminine and the masculine in our society. A perpetual battle that's always been. It goes back to ancient Sodom and Gomorrah and even before that. It's always been this struggle. And when the feminine tries to be equal to the masculine and overtake the masculine, you have a void. And today's America and, and white Western Christian civilization and whole white, what formerly white Christian societies and, and countries are turning into big, great voids. We're heading for God of Demeron. We're heading for Ragnarok. We're heading this whole society to just turn into a black hole or void. Because this world is death. It is destined for death. It's always been death. When you want something, you have to know what you want, whether it's for yourself or someone else, what you wish or pray for, for yourself or someone else. You have to know. You can't just say, I don't want that. I don't want that sickness. I don't want that financial problem. I'm going to ignore it. Yes, you ignore it. You disregard it. What you stop thinking about, you stop giving energy to. Because your thoughts and emotions are what creates your society, your, your life. Your life is created by what you believe, what you think, what you focus on. Because that's energy. Stop giving it energy. Okay, I'll stop thinking about that. I'll just ignore it. Okay, that's great. But you can't just leave it like that. You create a void. You have to focus on what you want instead and believe it into existence. This is what the Bible teaches. This, brothers and sisters, is a law of faith. You call it law of attraction. You call it whatever you fucking want. I call it the law of faith. That's really what it is. Romans 9, 31 through 32. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, verse 33, Behold, I lay in Zion, the sin of Israel, a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Jesus was that rock of offense. But the stumbling stone, where they really stumbled, what I just read, is they stumble at trying to find righteousness through keeping the laws of God, the moral laws of God. That's putting the cart before the horse. The horse that pulls the cart of living morally and keeping the moral laws of God and following the laws of nature, like kind after kind and, you know, the law of gender, things like that. The horse that is the power behind that is faith, is belief. You see, that's where the Pharisees fucked up. That's where today's neo-Pharisees fuck up. Is they want to tell everyone they can't do this and they got to do this and this, that, and the other. And they're preaching all over Facebook and YouTube and condemning people. And, oh, they're so self-righteous because that's that and the other. And where's their fucking belief and faith? Show me your faith. 
by your works. Your works of faith are walking in belief in the things that you want for yourself, wish for yourself, dream, desire for yourself, and for others around you that you love and care about. Your works of faith is that you walk in faith knowing that your health is fine. No matter what the fucking doctor's diagnosis are. Walking in faith knowing your finances are fine. No matter what your bank account says. But don't just believe, oh, it'll be better. I'll just ignore that. No, you actually have to focus. I used to wonder why there were people out here that lived immoral and un just fucked up lives. And yet they do fine. Their health is fine. It seems like they have great luck. Why, why is all that? Well, the Judeo-Christian and most identity Christians' explanation is, well, the devil's just deceiving them. They'll get their own in the end. Ha, ha, ha. They'll end up in the lake of fire. Ha, 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 ha. Because that's what they like. They, they want to think that people are going to suffer and burn forever in flames and run around screaming. Ah! That's disgusting. It's because they don't have any doubt. They have faith. They have belief. They have belief that their life is fine. And they're focused on what they want for themselves, health-wise, money-wise. They're focused and they know what they want. And they get up every day just believing it, no matter what's going on around them. They don't worry about it. They're determined and they have a good happiness about them and joy. And that's why people who live, you know, homosexuals or people who do all kinds of other shit, but it seems like their life goes great. Now, that's not to say that there aren't people that they live wicked lives and then their lives fall apart, but that's because of what they're thinking, what they're believing. If your conscience pricks you, it starts to attack your faith. There are people who their conscience attacks them. They think they're doing something wrong. They think they've sinned because they said the word fuck or something like that. And so they feel really bad. Whether something's truly immoral or not, they stress about it. That attacks your faith. And that's why the Bible says what is not of faith is sin. You sin against the God within you. You see, God wants to live through you. The Father wants to live through you. But the mother has to be submissive. The masculine, the Spirit of God in you, wants to live through you. The breath of God that he put, put in at the Adam kind, the white race, wants to live through you. And he's always giving you these urgings, these impulses, these drives, this understanding that he's there, the spiritual insight that comes to you. Sometimes when you're, you're really quiet, you're just, you're just relaxing or something, you're not really thinking anything, that's when he's talking to you, if you listen. Well, your desires in life for a better life, better health, things like that, things that you desire for yourself and desire for others lovingly, that's God through living through you. That's true love. That's God love. The Bible says that God is love. He is. The Bible also says God is spirit. All a spirit is, is feeling. You can't know a spirit until you have feeling. Jesus talked about how the wind blew and all this, but, no one, but you couldn't know where a spirit, when a spirit comes or goes. It's feeling. That's God. You can have negative feelings, which are demonic or evil feelings, or feelings of the flesh. But wholesome desires, wholesome feelings. The flesh will give you greed and lust and hatred and anger and all these other things. These are fleshly feelings, fleshly spirit, evil spirit, evil energy, negative energy, whatever you want to call it. Negative vibes or vibrations. But the good vibes and the good vibrations and the good desires and dreams and the wholesome stuff, that's the stuff a lot of times. It, it's like you just have to believe in a miracle because you have these desires. Every one of us have desires that we call big desires. We have little ones and medium ones we need for just through this week to get through this week or through the day or whatever. And then we have the bigger desires. And every one of us have these big desires that we're like, Man, I just don't know how I can get that or how I can obtain that. So what you do is you sell yourself short. You give up on those desires or you compromise and you sell. And you set a lot of fee. I talked about that in my previous video last week. You, well, if I don't do this, then I'll miss out an opportunity. No, you hold in your mind what you want. What has come to you, been inspired to you in your imagination, your desire and your feeling for what you want and you hold on to it. Come hell or high water, come a mountain in your way, like Jesus talked about the mountain in your way that will move if you have the faith. 
or the water of a Red Sea in your way that needs to split so you can get on the other side and get away from a trouble from an Egyptian uh, army coming after you. You hold on. Don't compromise. Don't accept. Tolerance. Don't tolerate. A lot of you are racially awake and you're also genderly awake. <laughs> you know there's only two genders and you know that there's more than one race. Not just the human race. You're awake to that. But you need to be awake to the fact that your desires, your dreams, are God within you, driving you forward to expand yourself. Because in the desiring of physical things in this life, whether it be better health, uh, better money, whatever it is that you're looking for in life, love, wh whatever it is, those it's in the journey that you grow spiritually. And then when you obtain those things, you go for something else. You continue to expand. Like the universe is always expanding. It's expanding because we are expanding. We the Elohim. God has expanded himself. He has procreated himself. He is the great I am. And we are his offspring. We are little I am's. We are the race of gods. And when we look inside of ourselves, we see that. Like the oracle is said. It's in there. We all have it. This godlike intuitiveness, inspiration, imagination, creativity. When you look outside yourself for God, when you look outside yourself for anything, you're giving power to it. You're creating a false God. When you look outside yourself to others, it's not that you don't go to others for help or inspiration or ideas or see what they got to say or whatever. I talk about that. But when you give power to someone else or something else, including a God out here or to any cause of anything or any person out here, even a belief system, anything like that, and you look to it to decide to be the deciding factor if you're going to obtain what it is that you're wishing to obtain, you're praying for, then you're giving power to a false God. God is within you. You're never going to find him looking out here. He's only going to be found within you. Ultimately, people that say, I found Jesus, or I found God, or I found spiritual inspiration, whatever it is they find, every last one of them, if they're genuine and their life has really changed for the positive or for the better, Every last one of them found him not reading the Bible, not praying, but introspection. Yeah, they read the Bible and pray. They can talk to other people. They can start going to church. They can do whatever they do. But in the end, it's just simply looking inside of themselves. The law of faith is the law of righteousness. Righteousness begins with faith not with keeping moral laws. You keep moral laws because you have faith. Faith is belief. You demonstrate your works of belief by your walk in life. If you're down and out, if you're depressed, if you're frustrated, it seems like you can't attain this goal or this, that, and the other, whatever it is that you need or want in life, this is unfulfilled desire that's within you. Your flesh is upset. Your spirit's not. Your spirit's the one telling you, go for this. And your flesh is saying, but I'm seeing mountains in my way. I'm seeing a Red Sea in my way. I'm seeing all these problems, this, that, and the other. And your spirit is saying, listen, I'm not going to tell you you can have something that you can't have. That's God talking to you. If you desire something very strongly and it frustrates you and depresses you and upsets you that you can't get it, that's a good sign. That's telling you. It's yours, but you got to get your flesh mind into subjection. And the only way you can do that is you have to crucify the carnal thoughts, the physical, the thoughts of logic and reason and go for something higher. You see, the only answer for a better life for you, for your family, for our race, the white race, is for each individual to seek a higher 
way of living, a spiritual way. That's the only way our race is going to transcend. We are a race of gods. And the scripture says, all of creation moans for the manifestation of the sons of God, for the making known that we are the sons of God. And that's only going to happen when you realize that you're a son of God, you're a Jesus, that you are God in the flesh. It says so in Psalms. Jesus repeated that. Jesus said that he was with you always. He gave all kinds of hints that he was you and you are him. The mind of Christ, let the mind of Christ be in you. All these scriptures are telling you. Well, how can I have the mind of Christ? That would be saying I'm God. Well, didn't they pick up the stones to stone Jesus for saying that in John the 8th chapter? Yeah. Today, people will stone you. Stones representative of facts. People like to throw the facts at you. You can't be a God. Look how large, sorry you are. We're all low down sinners. And they'll start to want to stone you. But no, my flesh is fallen. Of course it's, it's fallible. It's fucked up. It sins. It's weak. Of course the flesh mind is. Of course. But the spirit that lives in me, that I live from, the Christ mind, the God mind, is God. And the more that my carnal mind is submission, in submission, and I crucify it daily, I crucify the thoughts of doubt and logic and reasoning and worry and concern and fear and hate and all this anxiety and depression. And I begin to live from my spirit instead of thinking instinctually and impulsively, and carnally, logically and reasoning. But instead, I think intuitively and I seek inspiration and the quietness of my mind. When I quiet my mind when I'm laying down to rest or I quiet my mind to quote, pray or to reflect and just relax my mind, God can speak. He will guide you and show you. To be carnally minded is death, the Bible says. To be logically, physically brain minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life. And the only hope for your life, the only hope for your family, or anything you want to see do better, is you have to understand. Or your racial family, the white race, is you have to understand this. And we of the white race must begin to transcend. We're always looking at the negative out here, what we don't like, and it's only going to get worse because that's this world. It's to give us contrast. But as long as we focus on what we don't like, look at all this disgusting the ugliness, the, the Muslims, the black and white crime, the disgusting Jews and what they do, uh, all the, the feminine, uh, the, the, the feminist movement, homosexuality, the tyranny of the government, all this bullshit crap, blah, 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 that we don't like. The more we focus on it, the more energy we're giving it. You know the problem with the white race is? Especially you fucking white nationalists, you Christian identists and all the other. You know what your fucking problem is? You're giving energy to what you don't like because that's all you focus on. Hardly ever, I'm not going to say never because some do. Hardly never do white nationalists, white racists, Christian identists, racial patriots, white pride people, hardly do they ever just focus on what they would rather have. Don't focus on the kingdoms of this world. Focus on the kingdom of God. Focus on the, the, the what you want to see for yourself, for your family, for your race. Focus on the good things. Imagine what you want for yourself, for your family, for your race. Focus on the good, the wholesomeness, the beauty that you like. Don't be looking at pictures of National Socialist Germany or from the 1950s or the 1930s and be nostalgic all the fucking time. Think that's in the past. Oh, it was so wonderful back then. It wasn't always perfect. <laughs> never was perfect but you can think about how you would like to see what's something positive that you can start doing instead of always talking about what's going on with the the, the black and white crime the muslims the corruption of the government the feminist laws focusing on that shit let's start focusing on things that are good and wholesome hey it's it's fun you know when i see something negative or wicked out here i laugh at it i'm, not, I'm like I, I just mock it i make fun of it but in reality i'm more fascinated when white people actually get along when they're looking out for one another, when they're being kind to each other. And you know one of the coolest things is when two white people who are just mad or hell at each other and they forgive one another. That's cool as shit. Let's focus on the good things. Let's focus on positive things we could do, what we would rather have. Stop focusing on the negative. Replace the negatives in your personal life and in any other thoughts that you have Replace them with positive thoughts. Because as long as you focus on the negative, that's what you're going to get. You say, well, I ignore the negative. I just want to ignore all the bad news. Okay. But now you're creating a void. And the feminine and the masculine meet in the middle, and it creates a great black hole, a void. Focus on what you'd rather have. 
if you're I'm not going to ignore my medical issues. I'm going to ignore what the doctor said. I'm going to ignore the financial problems I got. I'm going to ignore that my marriage is falling apart. I'm going to ignore this, that, and the other. Okay, that's good. You need to stop doing that. But you need to replace it with belief and faith. Not hope. Well, I just hope it gets better. Well, I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to ignore it. That don't work. I'm telling you it don't work. you got to figure out what you want. Use all that negativity to define what you do want, what you'd rather have, and turn and face it and focus on it every day. That is the mystery of Christ. That is crucifying the flesh daily. That's carrying your cross daily. This is the way of Christ. This is Christianity. This is the way. It's to realize that Jesus said, you can do all these things that I do. You can move mountains. You can curse fig trees, even if it's not the season for figs like you did. You can walk on water. You can cure lepers. You can raise the dead. What he was saying is you can do things that seem impossible, but you have to believe. You have to see yourself doing it, see it happening, and believe it's going to happen. You can't just ignore the wicked out here in this world. you got to give something positive. In your social life and in your personal life, your individual life. Don't just ignore the, the negative. Because let me tell you something, if you focus on the negative and you're always thinking about the negative shit, you're giving it more energy. But if you're just focused on what you want, that's more of what's going to come in your life. You can't be in a void. You can't be in between. This creates a collapse, a God of Damerol. You face what you want. You determine the mountains will move. The split seas will split. You will walk on the water. The dead will raise. You determine this. These Seeming impossible things don't seem logical or whatsoever. And you focus and believe on them, even though it looks like everything around you, it ain't going to happen for you in your life. You're just not going to get that better job. Your finances are not going to improve. Your health is going to improve. You say, yes, it will, and I can see myself having better health. Or you can do it for someone else. Many of you are so altruistic, so pious, you'd like to think. Oh, I would never be so selfish about myself. I don't care about everybody else. Yeah, whatever. Okay, then do this for other people. Lift other people up in your mind. Believe and see and hear yourself, them telling you that their finances are better, they got the job, the health is better, their marriage is better. See this for them. Pray for them. Believe it for them. Do it for me. Don't judge me. For when you judge me, you judge yourself. Drop all judgment of me. I judge no white person. Now, I judge actions, well, you know, homosexual, that's wrong. Race mixing, that's wrong. Lying, that's wrong. Uh, those type of things, I have to judge that. I have to be discerning. When someone's trying to improve their life and trying to do better, I'm not going to nitpick and judge them. I'm just going to see them doing better. Pray for them. Don't judge me. You've not walked in my shoes, and I've not walked in yours. We are both God. Why would we judge each other? Why don't we love one another? Don't judge me. Don't say, well, Ryan has this problem. He has that problem because of this, that, and the other. Why are you judging me? I am a reflection of you. You are a reflection of me. People are mirrors of things that are going on within us. We are God. We are gods, and we all create our own little inner individual universes. Now, the universes intersect, no doubt about it. But in the end, I determine how my universe, my life goes, by what I focus on and what I believe in. If I believe in what I'm focusing on, and you do the same for your universe. Yes, we can help one another. But people are reflections. If you're feeling negative, you'll get you'll attract negative people around you. But if deep inside you, you feel like something's better, then you'll notice even though you feel down, people are always going to come up to you and try to encourage you. That's God. Inside of you, attracting God that's in other people to talk to you. And God can move nature. Yes, there are signs. Things will happen, synchronicities. As I've said in a previous video, signs and prophecy are useless. Don't look for signs and prophecy. Prophecy is understood after the fact. 
to show you that there's a design and engineering to our lives. We get to design our lives. We get to say what we want, we believe in what we want, and it happens. If you're focused on negative, then you're just going to keep getting more negative. The law of attraction, or the law of faith as I call it, is like the law of gravity. No one really knows what causes gravity. There's all kinds of debate. And then you've got people that are flat earthers that are saying, you know, this. And then Nikola Tesla said this about gravity, blah, blah, blah. I don't really fucking care. All I know is that gravity fucking works. And if we obey what we know about how the law of gravity, we don't fall. We don't drop things. Things don't fall over. But if we work with the law of gravity and other laws, like the law of lift and things like that, we can fly in hot air balloons. We can fly in airplanes, helicopters, and, and hang gliders and stuff like that, right? We work with this law of faith. And the law of faith dictates that what you focus on and what you believe in is going to happen. Now, if you're split, you're focused on negative of an aspect and a positive, uh, financial or something like that, then you're going to get half-ass results. You're going to get mixed results. I've had that happen in my life. You get mixed results. You have to be totally dedicated to what it is that you want. The power of belief is a physical law. They call it the law of attraction in the secular world, the new age world, and mysticism and all that shit. But the Bible calls it the law of faith. Everyone else calls it law of attraction. It's law of faith. It's the law of belief. Belief creates your tomorrows. Your today was created by what you believed previously. Begin to focus on what you want, believe it into its existence, and it will happen. Until next video, next week, may the God within you lead, guide, and direct you. May Christ live through you, and you be an expression of God in the fullness that you can be in your life.